welcome to my little paintbrush. I'm really excited you're here with me today. We're going to paint a beautiful scene that I'm calling Pine Lake. It's got some gorgeous orange and turquoise colors, so it's going to be awesome. Um, I just want to remind you, you can pause this video. You can also rewind it. You can stop altogether and come back to your painting another time if you're getting tired. Um, it's totally fine. Don't feel like you have to keep up with me or paint at my pace because I'm going to keep a pretty good speed throughout this painting, okay? Just remember to have fun, relax, and don't be too harsh on yourself. We're all on a journey together, all right? I am going to start off with a good size flat brush. This is a three quarter inch flat, um, but any flat will do. This is the one that I prefer. I'm gonna get it wet in some water. And here's my plate of gorgeous fall colors. Um, we are gonna start with our sky, but before you do that, make sure you've separated your white. That's super helpful. We're gonna be using a lot of white, so it's good to have them separated like this, okay? All right, let's start in our sky. I'm just gonna scoop up some yellow and white, really rough mix, and I'm gonna paint in a curved diagonal across my canvas. And notice I'm going into my mountains because I want a nice completed sky here. And I can still see my mountain lines, so it's totally fine. Now, as you go along, we're going to load more yellows and less white so that we have this gradient happening, okay? So we're gonna go right into those nice dark yellows like this. And then we're gonna start to introduce some orange, but we want light orange first, so we're gonna add some white to there. Okay, and notice I'm brushing into my yellow and into my orange back and forth. If you're painting on a wrapped canvas, be sure to wrap your edges. We're big fans of that here at My Little Paintbrush. Wrap your edges so that you have a nice completed piece. Okay, so as I'm coming along, I'm gonna start to add lots more orange and less white so that when I end at this corner of my canvas or my surface, I will have a nice dark orange sky. Also, be sure you're using your water. It's important to dilute your paint and move quickly across your sky. Acrylic paint will only blend wet into wet, okay? So make sure you're moving quickly. Notice I also went right over my moon because I can still see it. Um, if you are nervous about that though, you can try and go around it or just lift your brush, kind of bounce over it. But I like to have a nice clean line. Okay, our sky is in. We're gonna do our water next. Give my brush a nice wash. Now, as I do my water, I'm gonna do the same color scheme, light yellow to dark orange. But this time, I'm gonna go in a horizontal line across my canvas, okay? And you can get up close to that horizon line. You can even go over it, not a big deal. I'm not gonna stress about those things. I'm just gonna get a nice water line in, okay? So as you go down, you're gonna just add that darker yellow into the light orange and into the dark orange. And I load my brush really rough as I'm going because I like it to offload, kind of streaky, um, because you know, water ripples and all that fun stuff. So we want to indicate that. I can tell my brush and my paint are getting dry because look, my brush stroke is breaking. So be sure you add water when your brush stroke breaks like that. Okay, we're coming down, getting darker and darker into the oranges. And this is looking so gorgeous. I love this painting because every step of it just looks beautiful. I feel like you could stop at any time really and have just a beautiful piece, okay? Again, if you're wrapping your canvas, do it as you go. Don't worry too much about the bottom of your canvas because you're gonna have your shoreline. And so we'll wrap that when we do our shoreline. All right, it looks gorgeous. Now, I'm painting on mixed media paper, so I need to pull it tight again. It's starting to curl. If that's a problem for you too, you can just pull it tight as you go. And if you're working on a canvas, you don't need to worry about that. Okay, so now we have a beautiful sky. 
and beautiful water in super quick. Let's give our brush a wash because we're gonna move into some cooler tones now. And so we wanna make sure that our warm tones are out of our brush. Otherwise we're gonna have um, what we call mudding in the art world because when you mix warm and cool colors together, they tend to mud out. We don't want that to happen. So make sure you have a nice clean brush and we're gonna do our mountains next. And to get the color I want, I'm gonna scoop up some brown and mix it with my turquoise. And this creates a really deep, deep turquoise and kind of from a distance, it almost has this um, foresty green to it and I love it, okay? If you wanna move more into like the limes, you can totally add some yellow to this and make it a little limey. Now, once I have that color, I'm gonna get a scoop of it and mix it with a pile of my white. Again, look, we separated our white and so we have that option, which we wouldn't have had if we just had one big pile of white. So that's another reason you can see this white went to my warms, this one's working with my cools, and then I have a clean one that I can refer to when I need it. Okay, now we've got that beautiful light turquoise. We're gonna paint in our mountains. Now, because I'm working on this mixed media paper and because um, I've got lots of light on me, so my paint is drying super fast. Okay, I've got lots of light shining. So my the orange that came into my mountains is already dry, the orange and yellow. So I'm good to just paint right over it now. If yours isn't dry yet, you need to hold off, okay? Because again, your warms and your cool colors will mud. So you don't wanna just go right into it like that, okay? So we're just getting this on up our little mountains here. Make sure you're wrapping your edges. We're gonna add some fun details and another layer to our mountains here in just a minute. So don't worry too much about coverage just yet. You can come down close to that water line, but you don't have to get right up against it because that's where our pine trees are gonna be. So no problem there, okay? Or just see how fast we're moving. Again, make sure that you are slowing down when you need to. Pause this video. I'm gonna work pretty quick, okay? All right, let's go down to our shoreline, okay? I'm not even gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna utilize some of that light turquoise that's in there. But my shoreline is gonna be this dark, dark turquoise that we mixed. My shoreline is dry enough that I can work with it and it's just going to be this bumpy, bumpy little curvy line there at the bottom of your canvas. So just like that. I mean, super simple. Don't think about it. When we're painting nature, just let things happen on your canvas. That's beautiful. Flip your canvas over and paint the bottom. If you are painting on a canvas, you'll want to wrap your edges like I said, okay? So we've got beautiful things happening. The colors are already popping. Let's go ahead and wash out this brush really, really good again. Because now I'm going to go into my moon and I'm gonna put a layer of white. Okay, and again, I have a nice clean pile of white that I can refer to. So that's awesome. And the reason I'm gonna paint it white first is because I don't want my yellow, my yellowish moon to compete with the orange. I want it to be nice and bright. So I've got to put it in white first, okay? So just put that in. If you've lost the circle when painting your sky and you're feeling nervous to freehand it in there, grab a piece of chalk or a pencil and give yourself a line to work with. There's no shame in having that um, sketched in for you. Circles are tricky, so I would not blame you one bit if you needed to grab something and put it in. Okay. Awesome. So we've got some really fun things happening right now. And it's just going in so quickly. I'm gonna wash my brush really good. And then I'm gonna jump into some clean water with my brush because I'm going to put a shadow in my 
in my lake. Okay, so I want a damp brush, which I'm gonna squeeze gently with my fingers. You can see the water kind of drip out, but I want most of the water to stay in there because that's gonna help me get a nice faded um, blend into my water. I'm gonna take my damp flat brush, put one edge of it in this dark turquoise. I'm gonna take that edge and I'm gonna follow all the way down that um, horizon line, okay? This is where my trees are gonna be. You can see I just, all the way across, this is my shadow, okay? Right there on the water, all right? That's the main shadow. Now my moon is gonna cast light, so I'm gonna keep some light there in the center of my lake, but I'm going to drag in some shadow on the edges, okay? Again, damp brush with a little bit of turquoise, the dark turquoise on one edge, and brush it in. Some long strokes, some short strokes. Just pull it in, okay? This is, has a lot to do with brush pressure, okay? I'm really light, almost like a feather on your cheek going across here, okay? I'm gonna add some more water some more paint and do the other side, okay? The water is gonna prevent a harsh line from happening, okay? Um, and it's going to kind of spread that paint out, okay? So it's kind of fading instead of this just line of dark turquoise in your water. Make sure your water's dry. Again, these colors are gonna to mud together, okay? So if it's wet, you're gonna have brown happening. Notice I try with each stroke to pull in a different length into my water, leaving that center again, a place where it's indicating, yes, everything's casting a shadow. But there's also this gorgeous moon in the sky that's leaving some of um, the water lit up. Okay, some water on your brush if you need to, to pull some of these through. You wanna indicate, you wanna, you wanna pull those lines through to some degree. You just don't want, you want your heaviest shadows to be on the edge of your canvas, okay? Perfect, okay, let's jump right into um, the base of our mountains where our pine trees are gonna be and we'll just do this little rolling line and we're creating a base for our pine trees to sit on so they don't look like they're just floating along on this water. We're gonna give them a nice base. That'll make much more sense when we get our pine trees in. Okay, so just put that in just like that. And let's jump right down to our shoreline while we have this dark turquoise on our brush. Put a little bit of white on one edge of the brush and we're gonna paint in some light here. Coming on these little, see just like that. Look how fun that is. It's just this little, little indication of layers here, okay? Again, my, my painting is drying speedy fast right now, which is awesome for me because I could just jump to these different steps. You're not gonna have the same thing happening. So be sure to stop if you need to and dry it. Okay, this side I'm just gonna kind of fade in because we're gonna have some grass right here. I don't wanna keep most of that in the shadow. So I'm just gonna kind of brush that into that shadowy area there, okay? Looking gorgeous. All right, let's hop back to our mountains, okay? I'm going to take my flat, I'm not even gonna wash it, go back into that light turquoise, kind of mix it around. I'm gonna focus on the top of my mountains, okay? So come up here, make sure that orange and yellow is nice and covered, just like so. 
I don't even need to worry about down here because it's got great coverage, but I want to make sure the yellow and orange isn't peeking through too much. Okay. And after that, I can go right in to the lights on the top of the mountain. Okay, so let's go ahead, corner of our brush with some white, and let's take that white edge and go on the tops of our mountains, and then kind of just blend it in. Okay, mountains scare people. They used to scare me. I just felt like they were going to be so complicated to paint. And then it's all about keeping light at the top and on one side and letting the shadows stay in between. So this light turquoise is our shadow color. You want to keep that in to separate those mountains. So we're going to keep the light on the left hand side. Okay. I'm going to shape in another little range right here. Add some layering. Okay. You can already see we've got that mountain happening because we're keeping our light on one side of our mountains and letting the shadow happen on the other side and then just brushing it in, okay? Let it be streaky, let it be rough. It's awesome, it's all awesome. Okay, let's do a little just peekaboo of something happening right now, right in this area, okay? So you can see they're forming, they form really quickly. We'll come up here Come down on this one, okay, giving again that indication. Notice right here, I didn't put any white. That's my shadowed side. You know, when you look up at the mountains, especially where I live, there's great big mountains. And when you look at them, they've always got one side that's lit up and the other side's in the shadows. And that's what creates all that dimension in our mountains. Okay, so just like that, there's another one that's going to peek through right here. And I'm going to pull. Don't worry about getting super close to your horizon line because that's where our trees are going to be. You know, don't, don't spend time worrying about that part of your painting. It's not a big deal. Okay, I'm going to tap my, my moon. It's nice and dry. So while I've got well, I guess I better wash that turquoise out, huh? It's going to go straight to there. I forgot I had turquoise on my brush. So I'm going to rinse that out. And then I'm going to go into my yellows, pull some white, mix it with some yellow, because now I can really play with that yellow in my moon because that white layer is on there. And see, the yellow will pop now instead of competing with the orange. You'll get this nice um, yellow. I keep it fairly light. I don't go too dark with my yellow. But you, of course, can do whatever you want because it's your painting. So stay true to you, okay? All right. Let's do some fun trees here. I'm going to go ahead and grab a detail brush. Detail is basically the smallest brush you've got, okay? It's usually a round, and I like to work with the number two detail. That's a good size for me. And I'm gonna start to just paint gently in some lines. And these are indications, these are just reference points of where I want my pine trees to be. It's not, um, it doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, you can see I'm not even completing a full line. I'm just giving myself a reference. That's all this is, is a reference, okay? So I get those lines in, and now I'm gonna use a filbert to put my pine trees in. Um, this is a filbert. It's kind of a flat and a round in one. Flat brush with a round top. If you don't have a filbert, just use a round. You can even use a flat, just use the corner of it, okay? But I have a filbert, so I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna load one corner of my filbert, stop above my tree line, and start tapping in, and zigzag my taps all the way down. Now, these pine trees are in the distance, okay? Tap right into that um, base that we made. These are in the distance, okay? So if you've ever seen pine trees in the distance, 
you can't really make out the details. You just know that's a pine tree. Okay. And that's what I want you to think of. I don't want you to think of anything other than a rough idea of a pine tree. And I want you to just tap, 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 because if you think of this too much, you are going to create a pattern and you're just going to not have a natural looking tree. It's just going to look like you thought way too hard over it. So just don't just tap, tap, tap. Okay. Keep uh, the darker bits towards the center. So the load of your brush can be um, heavier towards the middle of the tree. All right, again, we're gonna start above and we're just gonna tap, 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 tap. Some of the trees can uh, sort of meet together and touch and some of them don't have to. Notice they're all different heights, okay? Nature is perfectly imperfect. So keep that in mind. Tapping along with our fun trees. This one's a nice tall one. I always like to have one that's sort of towering over everything else. And of course our trees are gonna go into this triangle shape, right? So we're just tapping along into that shape there. You might think, holy cow, you're going so fast. It really is a great tip to just go fast. The second you start to think about every tap of your brush, you're going to panic. And I'm telling you, when you stand back, you are going to see pine trees. You just will. Okay? If they're triangle and they're kind of blotchy, it's going to look like a pine tree. All right. Here we're coming along the edge, almost to the end of our canvas here. Tap, 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 tap. Tapping along, making some fun trees in the distance. Loving it. Okay, again, I went all the way into the ground, okay? See, our pine trees are in. Now I'm gonna, before I wash my brush, add some of that lighter turquoise. And I'm just gonna tap in little bits of that all the way down into the base because I wanna indicate some life there at the bottom. And I've got light turquoise on one end and dark on the other. So I can come through, if I get too much white, I can tap that darker end of my brush. But we're adding some highlight and we're adding structure to the bottom of our tree so they don't just look like they're landing on this green blob, okay? So we're saying, hey, look, down here on the ground, there's things happening, okay? So we're gonna keep going, going along. You can have a whiteout situation as easily as you can have a blackout situation. So if you get too much white, flip your brush over to the dark side and Blend it in a little bit. It's good to do this when your trees are wet because it'll naturally just kind of blend in. But see, we're just kind of rounding the base of our trees there so that they have, again, some structure. All the way down, tap in, tap in. I hope you love trees as much as I do. I just love to paint them. Look at that. Stand back a minute, take it all in. Looks awesome. Let's wash our brush. <clears throat> and how about we put some grass? Let's get our detail brush and loosen up, okay? Loosen up that dark turquoise. Add some water, mix it. Anytime we say add water, we don't just mean put water on your brush. You gotta incorporate it into your paint. So we're gonna start with our dark turquoise and we're gonna remember that grass does not grow in a straight line. So we're gonna bend our blades to the left, to the right, and up through the center. So you'll see, I'm gonna start at the base of my canvas, and I'm gonna pull up, bending to the uh, left, then bending to the right, okay? Pull some blades up taller than the other, curving again, center, and pulling some, okay? And of course, we'll go through and fill all this in more, we're just getting our first layer. Now this is our shadowed 
spot. So we're going to pull the grass, but we're not going to come above here because this is in front and this is in back. Okay, so we got our little blades going. Pull some of those up. Okay, let's go back over here and add another layer. Kind of got to layer your grass in, okay? It's not going to be perfect the first time. Okay, so we're just going to fill it in some more. Again, pull some of those blades up higher than others. Bend some. Some are going to be nice and thick. Some are going to be much thinner. No rules. No rules with the grass. Just grows. Just growing. Okay, let's come over here. We're going to put grass on top of this little, this little bump right here, but we're not going to put any grass there. That's just what I want to do. You do whatever you want to do. I just didn't want to grass out the whole um, little shoreline, you know? Sometimes when you get close to the water, there's parts where there's lots of grass and then there's parts where there's no grass. I was just kind of playing with that idea. Okay, pull some of those blades up like that. Now we're gonna switch from our dark turquoise to our light turquoise and put in some highlights and shadow. So come through and pull in some light. This also separates those blades so that you're just not working with the lobs of paint here. You're giving some indication. Go back to the dark one. Okay. It's so important. It's so important to add light and dark we call this value building in the art world. But it really builds layer, okay? So here we're gonna add some light and then I might switch to the dark. Make sure I didn't totally overtake that. Go back to the, the light, okay? I wanna stick mostly with my darker as I come around here because this is all kind of shadowed. But you can see just having fun with it. Okay. Again, we're going to stay kind of shadowy right there. Now let's go over here. Same thing. Add some light. Just like that. Pull some of these blades up high. This is not a well manicured yard, right? This is just the bank of a lake. Beautiful, okay. Let's hop right back to our filbert and let's add some fun texture into our moon. Okay, I'm gonna get my filbert, make sure it's mostly dry. Add some white, maybe touch of light, light yellow. And I'm gonna come along the right hand side of the moon like that. Put some white and then I'm gonna scuffle in. Pressure right here, lighter as I go. Pressure right here, lighter as I go in. Okay. This is so fun to do. Pressure right here, go lighter. Pressure. So you're pushing hard right here and then you're just lifting that as you go in. Okay. And again, we're keeping the white to the right side. Okay, and just like that, you just add that little bit of texture and light, and you can get all kinds of crazy with this, or you can just add a little bit and say, hey, I like that. That looks good, and I like it. Now, before we wash our brush, I'm gonna add just a little bit of yellow and white, and I'm just going to kiss the top of my mountains with a little bit, I got a little in my sky there, a little bit of yellow, okay? Because you know, when the sun and the setting and the moon is coming out and there's color in the sky, if you live around mountains and you look up at them, you'll see that light just kind of come onto those mountaintops. I've looked out my kitchen window several times and my kids will say, mom, the mountains are, mountains are pink. And we know it's a pink sunset happening. 
Okay, so we're just kind of dusting the top of our mountains with yellow. Pulling it all together, telling the same story throughout our painting. There you go, guys. How fun was that painting? One of my favorites. Let's sign our name. Get some turquoise here on my brush. Always sign your painting. Always be proud of your work. No matter how you feel about the painting, maybe you're disappointed, maybe you feel like it's not your best, sign it. You should be proud of it. Okay, that's it. We are all finished. I hope you love this painting as much as I do. I would love to see it. So tag us on social media at My Little Paintbrush. And I hope to see you again at the easel painting something fun together. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.